Line standards. Drafting is a graphic language. In this language, it, you can think of it as having an alphabet. We use sort of lines and symbols to converse with. We have what's called line conventions. It's also known in some texts as the alphabet of lines. These line conventions then develop a system of readability. They use various line weights to provide contrast between the different lines you read. The ASME Y14.2 standard, Line Conventions in Lettering, recommends that we use two different thicknesses to establish contrasting lines, and they call them thick and thin. The thickness of the thick lines is six millimeters, where the thick lines are three millimeters for thin lines. That turns out to be about 24 thousandths of an inch for thick lines and 12 thousandths of an inch for thin lines. Just have to remember thick and thin. The National CAT standard recommends four different line weights in theirs. So depending on what standard you're using, uh, the National CAT standard has thick, medium, wide, and extra wide as their designations. And uh, so each company will have perhaps their own standard. The alphabet lines, when put together, they are used throughout the drawing to make different parts of the drawing stand out. You can see in this example we're using each type of the lines uh, in our conve line conventions or alphabet lines. And together they form a language. It's kind of like having the letters of the alphabet be able to form our language. And here we have an example of each type of line in our line convention. We have construction lines, which are very thin that we'll use to lay out a drawing or project lines with. We have our borderline. The border is the frame of our drawing, kind of like our picture frame. It's very thick. We have our object line. Our object line is our visible lines or the edges of our contour or, or the edges of our objects. So if we look at a table, the edge of the table is a object line, and that's a thick line. Our dimension line is the horizontal part of a dimension, and it's very thin. Our extension lines are the vertical components that are what we're measuring from and what we're measuring to. These are also very thin. The hidden line is a series of repeating lines. Uh, these are dash lines, typically about an eighth of an inch with about a sixteenth of an inch gap, and they're very thin. A center line is very thin. Notice the center line has one long stretch and a short dash and a long uh, dash, and it repeats. <clears throat> so it's used to designate the center line of something. You can think of the center line of a road, for example. A cutting plane has two different types. A cutting plane uh, can use a very thick hidden line or a series of dashes, or it can use a very thick phantom line. Oops, sorry. And let me, uh, it has a very thick uh, phantom line. As we'll come down below, we can see a phantom line looks like it's a center line. It's got a long dash, but it's got two short segments. Is where the center line only has one, and then has the long dash, and it keeps repeating. So watch out for the center line and phantom line. They are different. So a hidden line represents hidden features that we cannot see from this view. Typically, they're on the inside of the object, or they're on the back side of the object, which we can't see from our viewpoint. <clears throat> A phantom line shows repeating details or an alternate position of a part. So there are different uses for that. A section line is a very thin continuous line. A section line represents when we cut a material and that there's some material here. So this might be cast iron, for example, that we cut through and we're shown that to have different lines. So, 
our uh, construction lines, or we use those sometimes known as projection lines. Our border lines are the thickest. They show the outside of our picture frame of our drawing. Our object lines are very thick lines, um, and they are showing the edges and intersections of an object. Our hidden lines show the hidden features of a part. Um, so they are dashed lines, essentially, uh, made up of a series of uh, eighth inch dashes and a sixteenth of an inch in between. A dimension line usually terminates with arrowheads and they're placed between two extension lines. They have a break in the middle where the actual distance is placed. Our extension lines are uh, thin lines and they show the beginning and ending points of a linear or straight line distance. A center line indicates the centers of a round object. There's three types of center lines. Here we have a primary center line that goes down uh, through the true view, uh, through the ground parts of an object. And they typically extend past uh, the round object by an eighth of an inch. So here we have three center, uh, three holes, and the primary center line is horizontal and extends past the edge of the, the three holes by an eighth inch. The secondary center line is usually uh, shown like in a drill hole and it shows uh, where the center center of the drill hole is and it does extend past the top of the drill hole and past the bottom of the drill hole by an eighth inch. And we also have a symmetry center line. Symmetry shows things that are equal on the left side as they are on the right side. So unlike the center line, let's say the center line of the highway, the left side of the highway is the same as the right side. But all the houses, if they're exactly the same on the left side of the highway, and all the houses are exactly the same on the right side of the highway, then it would be a symmetry line down the middle of the road. If the houses are different on both sides, uh, different orientation and placement, then the road would be a road would be a center line. A cutting plane line is indicating where an object is cut to show the interior features. So we're trying to reveal what's on the inside of the object. So all these lines together make up line conventions generally based from the ASME Y14.2 line conventions and letterings. All these together help us uh, place a picture together. And that picture then, when we put them all together, ends up telling a story in our language. And that language that we call in industry is drafting.